All right, so thank you again. Welcome to the first open house for the Lexington Parkway project. Um, my name is Tom. Again, I'll be kind of facilitating throughout the evening. We'll have a handful of presenters and I'll have them uh, introduce themselves each time we uh, start their section. So to begin, I will uh, kick it off to uh, Nick Fisher, the project manager for the county. Nick, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, uh, step one, unmute yourself. Hi, I'm, uh, like you said, I'm Nick Fisher. I'm project manager for Ramsey County. I'm here to talk about the Lexington Parkway extension. Uh, as you can kind of see on the map to the right there, um, this goes between Shepherd Road and 7th Street and is in between the Highland and Fort Road District Councils. Um, so we invited them here tonight, so they'll be hearing from them as well. Um, this, this is phase two of the project. Phase one is currently under construction, and we'll kind of get more into that in a minute. And phase two will kind of make the complete connection down to Shepherd Road. And the alignment will uh, improve connections for local and regional travelers, uh, not only in their vehicle, but also a big connection will be on bike and pedestrians as well. And currently this is a, a city street, Elway Street. And at the completion of this project, uh, it will be transferred to Ramsey County uh, when this is over. And I think after this, we're going to Kevin at the Highland District Council. Thank you, Nick. Yes, good evening. Uh, this is Kevin Gallatin uh, from the Highland District Council. Uh, I chair, I'm one of the volunteer board members on the HDC and I chair the Transportation Committee. Um, every 10 years, district councils are required to provide the city with their district plan using community input. The idea is um, the district councils go out to the community and solicit uh, what they would like to see. And over many years, over 20 years, the HDC has been hearing a strong desire to improve first the intimidating five-way intersection at Lexington, Montreal, and West 7th. And phase one of this project has largely accomplished that. So it's been very exciting to see. And the second part of that was um, we've heard a very strong desire to improve connections um, between Highland Park and the Mississippi River. Um, we've really got an urban gem here to have um, the Mississippi River and Crosby Park um, along the southern border of Highland, but it's really isolated across Shepherd Road and uh, it's very difficult to get to. Um, so really excited about the second phase, the ability to open up um, a, a more convenient, pleasant and safer connection for people walking and biking, and also to replace the really badly degraded uh, road surfaces and paths. Uh, right now there's just asphalt paths on either side of, um, of Elway Street um, with a lot of broken concrete joints going down that hill. It's not a pleasant ride, um, regardless of your mode of transportation. So excited to see all these changes. And um, this, this segment also passes under the um, CP rail spur, um, which uh, in the city has explored for possible bike walk and possibly even transit use. Um, and this, this roadway, well, that's, it's not directly addressing that. Um, it provides a, a, a nice, potential connectivity um, into the CP rail system, um, which will be a, a really great ped bike amenity at some point, hopefully in the future. So um, thanks very much for attending tonight. And um, I'll pass it off to uh, Dana DeMaster from the Fort Road Federation. Thank you, Kevin. Um, hi, I'm Dana DeMaster, um, the president of the Fort Road Federation's board. And I'm, I'm gonna thank Ramsey County and Tom for bringing us all together tonight. Um, we're also very excited about this project. The um, project representatives came and talked to our transportation and land use committee um, last month, but this intersection in particular has been longer and recognized as a very dangerous intersection, regardless of how you're using it, whether you're in a car or whether you're walking or biking. And so, these safety improvements and kind of detangling that mess of streets is just really exciting. And I think we'll bring a lot of just safety to the neighborhood. Um, we're also curious as we've talked to people in our outreach and communications with neighbors is everyone is looking for more ways to walk in particular walking, but um, improving the pedestrian experience all along West 7th. And this is an example of a project that we hope might be able to be learned from around some of the other wacky five, six, seven street intersections that go through up the Fort Road neighborhood. Um, and so how can we approach those with creative solutions that benefit all modes of transit? Um, 
And then on a final, more personal note, when I attended the initial outreach meetings at Summit Brewery on this, I brought my children who also bike um, with me in our family. And my then I think he was 10 or 11, but he's now 12. My son immediately saw the value of connecting these bike infrastructure from a bicycle perspective. And so his ability to get to places like Crosby and the Shepherd Road Trail, but also he said to me at that meeting, he's like, mama, if this is complete, I can bike to Dairy Queen by myself. And so he immediately saw that this is his connection for, um, a, for a safe way to get up to Highland and bring these neighborhoods closer. So thank you very much everyone for attending and um, thank you for hosting. Okay, I'm next. I'm Larry Poplar. I work for TKDA Engineering. We're the design consulting, St. Paul based design consulting firm that is uh, working with the county on this project. And we worked on the phase one project as well. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the different phases and what we were doing with the different phases. I think some of you may already know or have seen the work done on phase one, where we removed the leg of Lexington away from the Montreal West 7th Street intersection, um, provided a cul-de-sac at Lexington Parkway, and kind of moved Lexington Parkway over to West 7th Street, um, just north of the new apartment uh, Lexington Landing uh, building. Um, a new signal will be placed at that intersection with West 7th Street, and it will continue back to the south with, uh, with Elway Street was widened um, near the nursery in between uh, the St. Paul Schools building. And a connection from uh, Albion, Adrian Street was extended to Elway to provide for a connection for uh, people that live in that area for Speedway or Highland Nursery people to get to the new signal because because the signal at uh, Albion at uh, the Speedway will be removed. So phase two will extend what work we were, we were doing this summer and finishing up next spring. Um, we'll extend uh, Elway Street um, or Elway Street down to Montreal Avenue and then reconstruct Elway Street down to Shepherd Road. So here's a brief look at the schedule. Construction on phase one is uh, mostly complete. Um, we have a bit more work to do here and finishing up in the spring. Um, for phase two, the public engagement is, is just starting and that's the, the kicking off point for this project. We're doing a lot of data gathering as well. Um, and we will be starting design as soon as well. Um, the design will go till February 2022, where we will then bid the project and construction will occur in uh, the summer of 2022. So give you a kind of update on the schedule. As I mentioned, the a signal will, will be placed at, uh, this is the new um, Lexington Parkway at West 7th Street. A sig new signal will be placed there and that work is continuing to go, to um, happen this this fall yet or early winter. Um, over the next month, we uh, hope to see the signal system be placed there. All the underground work is done. Um, the loop detectors were installed just very recently. And once that signal is uh, up and operational, like I said, in about a month, we can remove the detour that has been in place for all of summer, basically. Um, and then in the spring, we will finish up the concrete work, put the final lift of asphalt down and uh, clean up um, and, and put inside and clean up the boulevards. So as we kind of talk about the next phase, um, as a reminder of what we're building in phase one, we have sidewalks on both sides of the street. We have bike lanes in each direction. We have one lane of traffic in each direction. And then we have some, some parking um, along that, that first phase route for Lexington Parkway. Um, there are turn lanes at West 7th, 
um, and Elway, but uh, for the most part, this is the, the look of the corridor. So now as we look at, at the next phase, and I mentioned the public engagement is the first step, um, we have a lot of things to consider with this next phase. I'll highlight uh, some, some of those things with the next, the next few pictures, but the goals of the project are to finish the connection of Lexington Parkway to Shepherd Road, make the street safer for people who walk, bike, and drive, reconstruct Elway Street, and improve the aging pavement and utilities. So here's a, a few photos of the current state of the corridor. Um, this is looking to the north uh, on, on Elway. Um, there are there aren't stripe for two, for two lanes, but there's width enough for two lanes in each direction for, for vehicles. There's a median, and then there's a, a walk on the um, west side of the corridor. Um, looking to the south, then that continues. We do have a couple access points, including, including uh, Crosby Point Apartments and another access uh, to the, to the on the left side of your screen for utility access. Um, then as you approach Shepherd Road, um, we have the signal system, we have a turn lane, and in the, the background is the Crosby Park Farm, which is a, um, a destination in this area for bikers and walkers. Um, there is a parking lot as well for people that uh, want to um, drive to that, that park. So that's a destination in this corridor. This is a picture um, at the Montreal and Elway intersection looking north towards the work we were uh, completing this uh, summer. And the new um, roadway will, will use this corridor. There's an existing right of way in this corridor that would be used to place the, the roadway through um, this area just, uh, just to the west of the Montreal high rise. This is a, a look um, kind of from the Montreal Elway intersection looking to the south. You can see the condition of uh, the, uh, the walk on the west side. The walk is, is pretty poor shape. It's fairly narrow. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's very inviting for walkers, rollerbladers. Um, it's fairly close to the roadway as well. And then when we get to the bridge, that walk kind of even gets closer to the roadway and actually abuts the roadway, um, working around that that bridge pier to uh, to make that pedestrian connection. Um, this bridge is somewhat of a limiting factor in our our design. So whatever design we choose through this corridor has to work through this bridge area. We have to work around the bridge pier in the middle and on the edges. So that's gonna be a control for the design. Um, this is a slide showing um, the Crosby Park Farm area. This photo was taken in a, a midday this summer um, during the week. And so there's a lot of use there, even in the mid uh, midsummer day um, during the middle of the week. Um, so this, uh, this destination, Crosby Farm Park, is an important consideration, and we want to make sure we provide good um, links for pedestrians and bikes, as well as vehicles, to uh, access this uh, this popular park. And this is a slide looking to the north. Another consideration for this project is the amount of traffic coming off of Interstate 35E, which is just to the right or to the east of this area. So we got a heavy movement of vehicles coming from the interstate and traveling north on Elway or traveling down Elway, making a left onto Shepherd Road to get to the freeway. This uh, signal system will, is also planned for replacement with this project. 
another important consideration is uh, the Montreal and Elway intersection um, you see here. Now the roadway will con connect to the north to West 7th Street with a direct connection, um, but there still will be a lot of traffic heading um, to the west to access the Highland area. So that turning movement um, from Elway Street on to Montreal will still be there. Uh, there will still be strong movements in that direction, as well as movements from Highland coming down Montreal and making a right-hand turn onto um, Elway. Um, the other consideration here, and we are studying that, we have a traffic study underway, is what type of intersections treatment we would use um, at this intersection. We are looking at four different options, a two-way stop control intersection, a four-way stop, a traffic signal, and a roundabout. The early indi indications are that the traffic signal will not meet warrants. In, in other words, it it's not justified at this intersection because of uh, the volume of traffic isn't enough to uh, um, what's called warrant a signal at this location. So we may have to look at some of the other options, but we are in the early stages of that analysis. Thank you, Larry. Um, so again, my name's Tom. Um, for public engagement on this project, uh, we will have open houses, uh, presentations, as well as uh, have some flexibility depending on the state of our world when we, we get to uh, 2021. Um, you all are at the first open house. Um, our next open house will be after the holiday break sometime, depending on timing, we will uh, promote uh, open houses using the same methods we did before, um, those postcards, uh, social media updates on our website, and then uh, getting help from project partners like the district councils to help push that out. Um, we also will have uh, regular website updates. I encourage you to go to the website. We've um, dropped that in the chat a couple of times and uh, sign up for um, updates or uh, use the contact information there to get in touch with project staff. So one of the first things that we're looking for feedback on on this project is our design criteria. Um, these criteria are based on what we heard during phase one of the project uh, and is also based on our technical analysis uh, so far. So these are what we'll use to kind of define uh, the rest of the design throughout the project. Um, so I'm going to read them out loud in case anyone is on the phone as well. Um, Create convenient, efficient, safe experiences for everyone. Provide pedestrian facilities that connect with the surrounding homes and businesses. Provide continuous bike connections. Provide reliable traffic flow today and in the future. And create facilities that are easily maintained. So those, based on those criteria, criteria uh, we've come up with a few options for uh, general cross sections, and I'm going to pass it off to Kevin to describe those in more detail. Uh, thanks, Tom. I'm Kevin Patelko. I'm also with TKDA, and uh, I've been involved in the first phase of the project, and now I'm working on the second phase. So the option A that you see there is um, essentially creating two lanes of traffic, one in each direction, plus on-street bike lanes, and then adding sidewalks on both sides of the road. Um, I guess as I run through these options, I'll kind of mention too that when we're working, you know, with the intersections and the bridge, there's going to be a, a certain amount of variability as to how these sections work, but this is sort of the general idea as to what we would be looking to build for the corridor. Um, so that's option A with you know, sidewalks on both sides. Option B is a similar option, except on the west side, instead of a sidewalk, it would be uh, more of a multi-use trail for bikes and pedestrians. Um, you could still have bikes on the road for, you know, bikers who prefer to stay on the road or off the path or go faster and then leaving the 
trail for both bikes and pedestrians. Um, we go to option C is sort of a similar idea, except maintaining the median in the middle. Um, as there's a median on the, the existing road now, and we still have to work around the bridge piers, this option would basically work around the bridge piers, but then maintain that median throughout the whole cross section while also including sidewalks on both sides of the road. And then finally, option D is to separate the bike lanes off of the road and to essentially create a multi-use trail on both sides of the driving lanes for the bikes and pedestrians to use on both sides to give significant access for the bikes and pedestrians. Um, it's the final design, like I could say, we have to work around the intersections that we're building around the bridge and then some amount of um, kind of mixing and matching within these things is also going to be a possibility depending on the final intersection designs and other constraints that are identified as part of the design process. So I think that's back to Tom. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so again, all of those cross sections are ones that we think fit within our design criteria. Uh, we will be looking for uh, feedback on the design criteria and those cross sections on a, on a survey. Unfortunately, we were unable to get the survey up and running today, but we will be pushing it out on our social media in the coming day or two here. Um, and it will describe all of those cross sections in detail again, as well as have design criteria ask which one you prefer, what you need to change. Um, I'm already seeing some things in the chat right now. Um, for feedback on those and that is exactly what we're looking for at this point in time. Um, we'll have uh, future uh, uh, open houses that will ask for feedback in future surveys that will ask for feedback more around some of those intersection things but right now we are looking primarily at general cross sections so that we can fit all of those pieces together moving forward. So that's uh, the end of our formal presentation. Um, we have a project website, which um, I will say out loud really quick for people who might just be listening in. That's www.ramseycounty.us backslash Lexington extension, all one word. Um, and on that website, you can find our contact information uh, and any other ways of getting in touch with us. I would like to um, turn to our question, our Q&A portion of the presentation now. And again, there are a couple of ways you can give feed or uh, ask your questions, um, either in the chat box, which I've already seen a few come in, and you can also uh, raise your hand and we can call on you. And I'll ask uh, for help uh, from staff to help get people who have their hands raised uh, unmuted so that they can ask their questions. Um, so I'll facilitate questions by saying them out loud and then I'll have our project staff um, help answer them. We did have a couple come in uh, ahead of the meeting on the registration sign in. And I will start with a couple of those before we get to some in the chat. Um, so first question, um, what do you intend to do to calm traffic on Lexington Parkway once it reopens? And maybe I'll turn this one over to Nick to talk about how um, traffic calming is going to be taken into account for phase two and phase one as well. Uh, I think especially on phase two is if you look at all of our sections, we're taking a four lane road and reducing it down to one lane in each direction. And then adding any sort of uh, bike facility and ped facilities. And I mean, there's room in those boulevards for trees always calms traffic when you put, you know, something in the boulevard other than grass and concrete. Um, any of that will help help calm traffic. And then there's always the intersection at uh, Montreal and Elway. Uh, what's that going to be if, if it's a roundabout? Obviously, you can't go screaming through the intersection. So there's a lot of things we can do here that would help um, calm traffic in this in this next phase. 
Thanks, Nick. And I, I just saw one quick question uh, come in about all the questions we got on email. We will be answering questions and we may follow up individually with people based on the questions. We'll try and get to as many as we can here tonight, though. Um, we had one question on the timing of phase one and phase two. Uh, this question came in the chat. They said, I'm curious as to why the design and public engagement for phase two couldn't have been done while phase one was in progress. Um, seems like we lost a year uh, and it would have been nice to do that all at one time. Nick, could you kind of explain the timing on why we did phase one and phase two the way we did? Yep, yeah, uh, and of course, while we were doing phase one, I mean, all, all we were thinking about is how to get phase two done. Um, however, right now, Elway is a city street and um, the county wasn't willing to take it back in its current condition. So we had to apply for some federal funding um, in order to get the project funded. Uh, projects these days are just so expensive that you really need many project partners um, to come in with some money to actually get things built. So to kind of prove to the federal funding people that you have project readiness, we went ahead with phase one. We were kind of going through it and it probably, I don't know, it was probably six months ago or so. I can't remember when we got um, uh, the, the funding for phase two. So then we went out, we got a, um, a consultant on board and started this whole process to kind of get it going. It would have been nice, I agree, to do it a year ahead of time, but that's how the funding is, it is how it is. Thank you. Um, had another question uh, come in about uh, phase one. Will there be a left turn lane on the new Lexington onto West 7th in order to access I-35E southbound ramp? I can answer that one. Yeah, yes, there will be. It's uh, um, striped for that already. Um, and then we, we just need to get the signal up and running and and open up the, the detour route. But yes, there will be a left turn lane for if you're traveling south on Lexington at West 7th to, to, uh, to get to Interstate 35. Thank you. Um, how about, uh, we had one come in about the name change. Um, will uh, Elway Street change names to Lexington Parkway? Nick, I'll pass that over to you for answering. Um, right now, the, the county just gives it a number and the city changes street names. Um, I mean, it's Lexington from here all the way to the North County line. Um, it's probably a good idea to keep it Lexington South of here. However, the city names the streets uh, so it's something we'll work with the city to see if they want the name changed or not. So I guess that's not been decided yet. Thank you. Um, have we had anyone with raised hands come into the meeting, uh, Rebecca? No, we have not, Tom. All right, just let me know if we do. Um, let's see here. Maybe this one uh, does a good job of talking about process. So uh, someone in the chat asked why I have a walkway on the east side of Elway. There is little if anyone living on the side and it would uh, just end at Shepherd Road. Um, Nick, maybe could you talk about the process of what we'll be looking at in the coming weeks and months here uh, for what, how those um, different cross sections will inform the design moving forward? Um, the county and city policy is basically to have pedestrian uh, facilities on both sides of the street because you really don't know where people are coming and going. And then especially if there's um, uh, one thing we're kind of leaning towards if you look at the sections is, is a multi-use path on one side and then possibly a sidewalk on the other. So if you don't want to mix with bikers on, uh, on one side, you can always cross the street and, and walk on the, the sidewalk. But uh, they're probably going to stick to um, having pedestrian facilities on both sides, because that's just uh, how the world is now. We, we want to kind of promote that for big time. 
Thank you. Uh, we've had several questions come in about um, concerns with increased traffic on Lexington once we go through uh, onto the Elway Street, make that connection onto Elway with phase two. Um, maybe, maybe we could address this by answering the question, uh, what sorts of impacts do we see or what sorts of increases do we see on uh, traffic in the coming, coming years with this project? So right now, Elway has about 5,200 cars a day. And then Lexington, uh, just north of 7th Street, has roughly 6,600 cars a day. So it's probably safe to say there might be a thousand more cars the day you open Elway Street right here. However, what, what we're trying to do is, and you can tell by how we kind of keep repeating ourselves, is we want to, the county really wants to get people out of their car. And if you can bike to Crosby Farm Park instead of drive there, that's kind of what we're looking for. Or if you can walk there instead of drive there, is trying to maintain more facilities to kind of get people out of their cars and into another way of mode of transportation. So that's kind of the project goal. I am looking through questions right now. Sorry if I'm, I'm missing any, I'm scrolling up to see what we've got. Tom, we do have someone with their hand raised right now too. All right, let's 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 hear from them. Okay, Andrew, I'll unmute you. Unmute. Yeah, um, I just wondered, is the stretch of Montreal, I, I didn't quite gather from your presentation, from uh, the stretch of Montreal from West 7th to Elway, is that going to be part of this project or is that something else? Because you have a lot of um, cyclists, pedestrians, and people who are uh, potentially accessing um, Shepherd and uh, Crosby Farm and, and other stuff from Montreal, you know, who will have come down the hill through Highland Park. And uh, I don't, is there any plans to like stripe bike lanes or something on that little stretch of Montreal? And, and that's a good question. Um, it's always tough to say this is where the project ends because it ends there. There's always more needs at each end and east west. Um, as of right now, no. However, when you come into conversations like this, and we have city representatives on this call, that those kind of things cannot be ignored and will probably be talked about and vetted through the process. So they might kind of happen on the periphery, uh, not as part of this one, but um, bike lanes are just a bunch of stripes down the, down the thing. So it's pretty easy to put in if we have room for them, you know, with putting it in with our project. So I'm not saying yes or no, but it's, it's definitely talked about. Uh, we have another person with their hand raised. Could we uh, unmute them? Hi, thank you for taking the time to answer my questions here. Um, and I know that my questions may have come across critical in the uh, text box, but I do understand the need for this and I understand the importance of it. Um, so my concerns really are twofold. Number one, um, all of this construction has really eaten up West 7th and I'm concerned that I'll have to, you know, my taxes will be part of paying for the repaving of West 7th down the road. Um, because there are two major projects going on and they've been going on for a long time. So number one, I'd like to know how you have um, factored that into your plans. Number two, um, I have not seen a great, I live right on the corner of West 7th in Montreal and Lexington. Um, so like literally I can feel every car go by. I run outside to every accident to make sure everyone's okay. Um, and I'm concerned that number one, I, I don't know if stopping Lexington there has really decreased the number of accidents in the way that, you know, we, everyone hoped that it had. Um, and I'm very concerned that adding bikers to that mix and like the runners to that mix, I, I, increasing those numbers will, will um, lead to more 
potentially more more hazards, right? Because realistically, is a biker going to come down that hill on Montreal, cut left and go through that um, walkway, which is very nice, by the way. If no one's seen it yet, um, what they're what you guys are doing over there is great. The plan is great, um, but no one's going to like go and take their bike and then ride down to Lexington and then go cut right back to Elway. They're just going to cross at West Seventh and Lexington, right? So I just like to know. Have you thought this through or have you thought that those those situations through number one, the, the 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 wear and tear on the roads and number two, the fact that really I'm not or really have the accidents decreased on Lexington and what's going to happen when you add more runners You're because you're inviting them right you add more runners and more bikers. Thank okay. you. Thank you again. And again, I, I, I know this sounds critical. I love what you're doing. I just want to make sure that it's safe and that everything's thought out. Okay. And I agree. I would love to fix all the things you just talked about all at once. However, the project is what it is here. Uh, what happens is at meetings like this, this is how the next project comes. Um, so I agree with that intersection at West 7th in Montreal is not perfect and still needs like the last person said, they need bike lanes on Montreal. I agree. And you need to probably need to put a new signal in there because that one's probably 30 or more years old. It's maybe older than me. Um, so that needs to change. And then every time we close the road, you detour more cars to 7th Street and it beats it up. So that, of course, is obvious too. And that needs to get worked on. So I agree. All these roads need to be worked on. And it's big public conversations like this the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So the more we talk about it as a public and public meetings, the more likely another project will come along and says, hey, we have a problem. Um, this new connection is really great. Let's fix the one next to it that also connects, you know, peds and bikes and makes everything safer for everyone. So keep coming to meetings. This is how things get done. I'm seeing uh, a few commenters uh, coming back to the increase in cars per day. Um, this person said, I'm concerned about making left turn from my driveway uh, at Crosby Point Apartments and Glen Terrace Condos onto Elway Street. Um, has your planning process considered this and how is it going to be resolved? So that is a very good question because if there is more cars, it's gonna be harder to take a left out. So what that really comes down to is the gaps in between the cars. Um, so that's where you really have to look at the Montreal Elway intersection is whatever we do there has to um, kind of give you enough gaps so you can make it through and then look at also the new signal at Shepherd and Elway, how that retiming of that could make your gap acceptance. So I don't have an answer for that right now. It's something we have to do with our traffic study and figure out but it's a good, that's a very good question. All right, um, let's see. Uh, I'll go back to a couple of questions we got uh, on the registration uh, and maybe this is, Reiterating a little bit, Larry, what you said about the intersection at Montreal, could you could you um, maybe do a little repeat, but then talk about the process for how we're going to figure out what happens at the intersection of Elway and Montreal? Sure. So, tra traffic. The traffic analysis is number one. We we want to hear your opinions on what could what uh, people would like to see at that intersection, but the traffic safety analysis is number one in determining what is acceptable at that intersection, what kind of delay, they, they compute how much delay each option would um, create um, for the different entry points going e coming east, west, north, south. Um, but yeah, again, we're, we're looking at four different options um, with the traffic study, a four-way stop, a two-way stop, so two stopping on Montreal and, and having um, Elway um, as the through, a traffic signal, 
as I mentioned, the, the warrants are, are not looking likely to be met for traffic signal. Um, but we are continuing to analyze that. And then a roundabout. And a roundabout, um, there aren't many roundabouts in St. Paul. Um, but this one, you know, we're even looking at a, what's called a mini roundabout option where which has a smaller footprint it doesn't take up as much room and space to to build so th those are the options we're looking at and again that traffic analysis is really key to understanding what type of delay each intersection option would have for the corridor because you know any, any one of those will have different um different delay for different um, legs of that intersection Thank you, Larry. Um, we had a couple of questions about uh, connecting cycling routes. Uh, maybe the best way to ask it and kind of do a uh, combining of different questions is how, how are, will we consider uh, various cycling routes, the uh, CP, um, the trail on Crosby Farm Park and in future routes, how will those be factored into our design for phase two? I would love to like predict the future of what that trail will look like, um, you know, potentially on top of the bridge, um, kind of tying them in is, is uh, it'd be great to do now. However, Canadian Pacific still owns that right of way and building things in on their property is uh, pretty much frowned upon unless you uh, um, kind of write them a big check. Um, so we're going to have to kind of just make sure what we build will someday be able to tie very easily uh, into any future um, um, you know, path that goes up there. And then crossing the street into Crosby Farm Park, um, we're going to have to look at how our trail bike lanes kind of line up with whatever they've got at the park and make sure it's kind of a safe crossing where they are, make them more perpendicular. Um, and that'll definitely be taken into consideration when, we, when we're putting them in. Thank you. Um, I've got one other question in the chat and then we'll go to uh, the person with a raised hand. Um, this question was about the phase one. Uh, so maybe this is for Larry. Uh, is the signal at uh, Elway and West 7th a standard traffic signal? Where will the detectors be able to sense when a cyclist is waiting to cross 7th Street? Yeah, it's a standard traffic signal. Um, I, I, I don't have an answer for you on whether it can detect bicycle um, bicyclists. Uh, so, Larry, I do. It does. Okay. It, it, there is a specific bike loop in the lane to detect uh, cyclists that approach the signal. I, I think there was another question about traffic calming on phase one as well. Um, I saw that in the chat and I can answer that one. Um, there, we did do some bump outs at uh, where the old Lexington and the new aligned Lexington meet and that bump out um, slows traffic. Um, we also have tree plantings, parking along the corridor um, as well. And we, we looked at the, you know, that curve, at least in this section, um, will also be a deterrent to speeding. Um, of course, as, as Nick mentioned, we're just focused on, on this area on phase one and then phase two. I think in the chat, um, they mentioned speeds uh, kind of to the north heading toward Randolph. Um, and I, I guess we can't answer that with these projects, but um, it's certainly something as Nick mentioned that, um, you know, ha having heard that concern, um, we can start or the county can start thinking about. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca, does someone still have their hand raised? Yes. I will unmute Andrew. 
Yeah, I just had a further question about the um, Montreal Elway Street intersection. You were saying that signal warrants currently uh, are against putting in a traffic signal, but uh, isn't it possible to apply for variation from warrants? Um, that was that was one question, and then my other question is. Um, all these signals, um, Shepherd Road, uh, West 7th, and say if there were a signal at, at Montreal and Elway, are they um, signals that can be synced or timed or, um, you know, uh, are, are the signals that Ramsey County is putting in now sort of um, centrally controllable or versus old signals? Um, yes, all new signals are what they're called interconnected so they can talk to each other. Um, so that helps uh, kind of get people from one end to the other. And um, um, from a guy who puts up a lot of stoplights, it's really difficult to put one up that isn't warranted. Um, so I would really doubt we'd put one up if it didn't say that we needed one. Uh, that kind of gets your funding in trouble because um, no one wants to fund something you don't need to buy and stoplights are incredibly expensive. So I would highly doubt we'll go that route. But we, we're still working on our traffic study, so we got to see, you know, because this is a road that really doesn't exist now, so we got to look at um, future traffic um, and what's going to happen when we connect the dots, basically. Thank you. Uh, we just had another one come in on the chat relating to uh, truck route. Um, on the St. Ball Bridge slash truck route map, Lexington north of West 7th is limited to commercial vehicles. Will that be the case for the new slash reconstructed section between Shepherd and West 7th Street? So I know Lexington Parkway is called a parkway and normally that in the city means no trucks. However, this is a county roadway and um, what the way they're funded is through gas tax. So anybody who fills up their car, vehicle, truck, commercial truck with gas can use these roadways by statute, by law, basically. Um, the trucks help fund them so they can drive on them. So yes, between on, L, on the new LA, once it becomes a county roadway, trucks will be able to use it. I think we've uh, gotten the most recent ones. I'm scrolling all the way to the top right now to see if we had any early ones come in. Um, any any staff that saw the saw some come in that they want to address, please let me know. Uh, do you just uh, a couple of recent ones just came in. Uh, as far as connecting the dots, have you looked at induced demand as part of this project uh, from a climate safety perspective? This seems highly relevant. Yep, and I agree, it is very relevant. And as part of our traffic study, we're gonna have to figure out, well, how many people are coming here? How many people don't use that 7th Lexington Montreal intersection now? Cause it's just so, terrible to go through that you're just like, I just don't gonna go through there, you go somewhere else or you just wait until off peak. And then if you put this new route in that's better, um, will that work and will that induce demand? So that's, that's a good question, we have to look into that. And as far as, um, you know, everybody's worried about uh, uh, global warming and increasing, you know, the amount of uh, people that drive and whatnot. And that's why we just pound on everything that we're doing and we're trying to, um, push the pet and bike improvements as much as we can. And then um, one of the last comments was Metro Transit. There is a Metro Transit stop out there on, I think, Montreal and Elway. And we will be working with them because this connection might change how they do their own routes. So we're gonna, we haven't connected with them yet, probably because we haven't decided what that intersection looks like yet. And when we will circle with them, we can kind of talk about uh, what their future holds and if any changes would come due to this project. Um, we had a couple of comments come in about, uh, Nick, this might be 
something we have to follow up on, but it's related to truck. Uh, state law allows cities and counties to prohibit trucks from roads not built for a certain level. Uh, do you know the answer to that? Could you comment on that? So what they're probably talking about is a 10 ton standard. So you have to have uh, a significant enough section on a roadway to take the truck because it's basically take the weight of a truck. And this will be a 10 ton roadway. Um, so even, I mean, even a smaller street, if you ever look at a snowplow full of salt, they're pretty heavy. So you gotta keep them up. Um, so that's, that's the way they did it. And I know this probably has been signed for many years, 30, 40, 50 years, no trucks on Lexington Parkway. And those were obviously city installed signs um, due to the neighborhood and disliking it. However, um, those are kind of dangerous things because you could lose your, your funding um, to by putting them up. Basically you lose your gas tax dollars to even maintain the roadway. Um, so those really cannot be there. Another recent question. Uh, you discussed uh, intersection of Montreal and Elway slash Lexington not being warranted for a light. Does that also include lighted crosswalks as well? Um, this person was thinking about the crosswalk just south of Grand on Snelling near McAllister. So when we do a project, we do pedestrian style lighting along the whole thing. Um, so no matter what happens at that intersection, it will have I can't remember how often, but fairly often lights along it. So similar to uh, the newer roadways like uh, Randolph or Ford Parkway, um, about that often with LED new lights. So it should it will be well lit no matter what we do. Awesome. I do want to acknowledge we're getting close to time here. Um, as a a uh, repeat of uh, what I said earlier, there will be a survey going up that will ask people for feedback um, and we will always be able to take questions via email or phone. Um, Nick's contact information is here uh, on this uh, page here and then there will also be um, all that contact information available on the website. Um, maybe we could get a couple more questions before we hit six o'clock. Uh, sorry, it was a comment that just came in, not a, not a question. Um, any, any closing thoughts, Nick or Larry or any, any uh, staff on anything else you'd like to say based on all the questions we just answered? Well, basically we, we have a lot of unknowns tonight because this is our first meeting. Um, so we're gonna have a few more coming up after the first of the year. So just please keep coming. Um, we don't have all the answers, of course, we're just kind of starting out, um, but more, we'll get more of it honed in as we come uh, go along through the process. So please keep coming to meetings and they always make the project better. I think that's pretty good way to close out. Again, we'll be following up with people who had more in-depth questions uh, come in via email throughout the project, but also um, around this open house. Um, we'll be at the uh, district council meetings uh, in the coming months. Uh, we will uh, also be available for any flexible engagement if there's uh, a suggestion from People, we're, we're open to making something work. Uh, we know this is kind of trying times or different times for engagement, um, all, all via virtual engagement. Um, so I think we'll wrap it up there and uh, thank you all for, for coming tonight. Uh, we hope to hear from you soon and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, working on this project for about the, you know, the next year and a half here. So we'll be in the area and we'll be back. So thank you very much and have a great rest of your night.